Protesters continue to fight against the Dakota Access Pipeline that would bring uh, crude oil from the back and field in North Dakota to markets across the country. Now, proponents of this pipeline, first off, claim that the controversial project will enhance something called energy independence. I mean, that's what you hear all the time, right? Energy independence. Uh, we need to drill more oil so that we can be energy independent, so we don't have to get oil from the Saudis, right? We don't have to get oil from the Middle East or from the terrorists. So we're not paying the terrorists. We have energy independence. Energy independence. Okay. Now, energy independence, it sounds nice, right? Being independent, oh, great, you know, we don't have to rely on these fossil fuels from, you know, areas that are a little suspect, right? But the thing is, is that it's an argument, a false argument, that is aimed towards people who don't actually know how oil markets work, right? Oil markets are global, right? Oil is bought and sold on the world market. Now, how this relates to the Dakota pipeline is that, look, if the Dakota pipeline ends up being built and oil gets shipped through the back and fields, most of that's going to end up, you guessed it, on the world market. Now, The Intercept reports that Energy Transfer Partners, the company behind the Dakota Access Pipeline, has built public support and pressured le regulators to approve the project by asserting that the oil will enhance energy independence because it will be used exclusively by U.S. consumers. The company claimed in a presentation in Iowa, a state that granted approval for the project this year, that the pipeline will feature 100% domestic produced crude that supports 100% domestic consumption. Sounds great, doesn't it? But of course, when it comes to scrutiny, it doesn't hold up. The domestic energy claim, which has been touted by company brochures and pro-pipeline websites, has also been used to criticize hundreds of demonstrators in North Dakota who say the Dakota access endangers drinking water and threatens sites that are sacred to a number of Native American nations and tribes. It's a shameful act by a group of people trying to disrupt our energy security and independence, Dakota access officials told the Associated Press in response to the protests, which have blocked construction of the pipeline near the city of Cannonball, North Dakota. Which, by the way, who doesn't want to be from Cannonball? Awesome. Especially if you've got a pool. <laughs> anyway, um, as far as the Native American, the protesters go, how dare they care about their water and their sacred sites? You know what's sacred to these corporations? Money. That's what's sacred here. Now, despite the claims by Dakota Access officials, write The Intercept, that the oil would be used here, critics point to the evidence that the oil will go abroad. Now, here's some evidence, right? Back in December, Congress had lifted the 40-year ban on crude oil exports, meaning that we are not planning to use some of the oil that we drill here. No, no, we plan to export that. We're going to sell it. And by we, I mean the very profitable oil companies and not actually us. You see, it's our oil. It's American oil. It comes out of the ground. But the people that pump it out are private corporations that don't give a damn about America or us or paying their taxes or any of that. But wait a minute. What happened to energy independence? What happened? What happened? It doesn't exist. Now, Bernadette Johnson the managing partner of Ponderosa Advisors, an energy advisory firm, uh, says that we tracked the Dakota Access Pipeline and the export dynamics closely, you know, to see if uh, it's more profitable, basically. Now, Johnson notes that the pipeline provides a competitive option to bring back in barrels to the Gulf Coast, where, quote, some of it may be exported. Now, the Intercept also reviewed regulatory filings that suggest some of the oil transported by the Dakota Access Pipeline will be shipped overseas. So, look, you remember earlier, the, the claim, the pro, the, all, all the uh, brochures and the pro pipeline went said, no, no, it's going to be used 100% here, 100% here. We're pumping it here, we're using it here, man. Well, this is a direct um, contradiction to that. And look, when reached for a comment, a spokesperson with the pipeline project declined to defend the firm's earlier statement about 100% and domestic consumption. Look, we said it was going to be used all the way here, but I'm, I can't really say that because 
That's not true. I can't really defend that, so you're right. We didn't really plan on using that here after all. He says, uh, this uh, spokesperson says, we will not own the oil that is transported through the pipeline. We are like FedEx. Oh, nice. We will deliver the oil to the refineries for the producers. Um, and as, as I said, that is uh, Vicky Granado, Energy Transfer Partners spokesperson. So where will it go? I mean, in the United States before it gets shipped out. Well, the Dakota Access Pipeline route will bring oil from the back and fields to a hub in Illinois, from which it will connect to existing pipelines that will lead to the Netherland, Texas terminal on the Gulf Coast, a facility owned by Seneca Logistics, a partner to the Dakota Access Project capable of crude oil exports. Not only that, but Energy Transfer Partners 10K, filled with, filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission, notes that low crude oil prices are a challenge for the company due to, quote, general oversupply, but that export projects under construction, including at Netherland, will balance this market by the year of 2018. The filing also lists the back and pipeline in a section about positioning the company as a leader in the export of hydrocarbons. A leader in the export of hydrocarbons. Great. No, 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 no. Energy independence, guys. Energy independence. You know what that is? It's a farce. It's a fucking lie. Bold place lie. To get you to support these pipelines that are prone for leaks, for one, so that they can sell the oil overseas and make an extra buck while you pay for the cleanup. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. This is exactly the argument for the Keystone XL pipeline. What they were going to do with the uh, tar sands from Alberta. They were going to bring it through America to Texas to ship it overseas while we see no benefit and we end up getting uh, stuck with a bill if there is a spill. And there will be a spill. Or there would have been. So, and if this gets built, there will undoubtedly be a spill here as well. Now, um, let's see. Jonas Margram, who is an Iowa resident who lives in a county along the path of Dakota Access Pipeline, who has protested this construction, says, look, we are certain that this oil will be sent to the Gulf of Mexico and sold to the highest bidder. This guy, he knows what's going on. He knows what's going on. Magram says the claim that the Dakota Access is designed to produce or is to boost energy independence is, quote, absolutely baseless, especially since the unrefined oil can now be exported. Attorneys for the Dakota Access Project have repeatedly dismissed that concern, calling them, quote, irrelevant. Your concerns are irrelevant. Nice how they think that, that, uh, that that's true, that our concerns are irrelevant. You don't matter. You're a lowly citizen. We're a corporation, and we're here to steamroll you if that means us getting a little bit more profit. Now, finally, The Intercept reports that this firm... I mentioned the export ban, right? How that was lifted. Well, it turns out this company had an active role in removing that. The company that is trying to push this pipeline that they claim will lead to 100% energy independence and that all the oil pumped will be used here. Get this. Former P Governor Rick Perry urged lawmakers to lift the ban on crude oil only one month after joining the Board of Energy Transfer Partners, the parent company of the Dakota Access Pipeline. Filings reveal that Energy Transfer Partners also directly lobbied on H.R. 2029, the legislation that lifted the export ban on crude oil last December. Energy independence, my ass. They have no intention of keeping any of that oil in the United States or using it. And look, to be honest, even if they kept it here, I still wouldn't be in favor of it, right? In my opinion, we need to keep the oil in the ground. We've got a climate catastrophe that's coming. That's almost already here. Okay. We've got some major issues, right? And look, to combat that, uh, people saying, look, we need something. We need, we need, uh, we, uh, solar. We can't do that. No, we can. We actually all ha already have that clean energy technology. It's ready and it's available. We don't need oil anymore. We don't need natural gas. We don't need coal anymore. Okay. We don't need pipelines. We have all the energy that we could need. And it comes in the form of a giant nuclear reactor in the sky. It's called the sun. We need to start tapping into that energy more and investing into that more and replacing and phasing out 
fossil fuels. And we've got to do it, and we've got to do it soon, because we're running out of time. Hey everybody, if you like this video, then please like this video and share. And if you want to see more like this, then please hit that subscribe button below.